<laughs> SexyHackers.com Once upon a time, there were a few young girls with a passion for literature, a love of the written word, an inspired infatuation of... Okay, fine. We were a bunch of super dorks with no friends. We spent all day hiding out in our rooms, reading books that were maybe a little inappropriate. Hello and welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of Who Let Me Read This? The podcast where a group of us uh, friends, actors, comedians, gals, I don't know, come up with it. Folks. I like folks. Um, Go back and review the inappropriate books of our youth and how it's affected our our view on lives and our ginormous therapy bills that we're coming across now <clears throat> just a little bit so that's just maybe that's just me i don't think it's all just right, you. all right fair enough <laughs> no. mine is booze bill but you know same yeah. <laughs> yeah, same there's just no copay for that yeah um so laura has picked our book this month um we are on episode three of die softly by Christopher Pike, um, a gem of a book published in 1991. Um, we're here today at the Sexy Hackers studio. Big thank you to Sexy Hackers. Um, they are hosting us. They've also outfitted us in some sweet t-shirts. Uh, Laura has one with the Sexy Hackers logo, which is a kind of rockabilly cat. I love that little kitty. I know. She's super cute. Um, Andrea has the believe in yourself when no one else does Bigfoot <laughs> shirt. Um, yeah. Truly Michelle, words to live by. Yeah. Michelle White has joined us today in a, a, a 20 sided die heart t shirt. I love it. Um, I mean, I feel a little bit like a fraud, <laughs> but I liked the shirt. <laughs> it's a cute shirt, even if you shirt. don't play D&D. Exactly. exactly. Um, and I'm Sarah. I'm wearing a follow your gut shirt that I actually <laughs> stole from the host of um, Turn to Page Fun. <laughs> uh, it said follow your gut, so I had to cut it off into a crop top. So, you know, it, it was asking for it. Delightful. It's only logical. Um, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> but let's dive back into Die Softly by Christopher Pike. Um, we're about halfway through the book, yeah. so Laura's going to give us a little plot update about where we are right now. Mm-hmm. It's been a ride. Yeah. In case you didn't listen to the first two episodes, in which case, you know, you can just pause right now and go back and do that. Otherwise, um, <clears throat> as we enter, meet Herb, our lame, not so bright, and unattractive and poor protagonist who has been <laughs> encouraged by his dumpy but loyal best friend, his words, not ours, uh, Sammy, to take pictures of the school cheerleaders, including his dream girl, Alexa, <laughs> in the shower. <clears throat> sure. Wait, what? <laughs> yep. <laughs> On the way to pick up the film, because this takes place in 1991, Herb comes across a car crash at the exact same place his other best friend's brother, Roger, died six months ago in a cocaine-induced car accident. <gasps> the driver of this car is Lisa, his dream girl's bitchy best friend and Roger's girlfriend. Turns out she was a long-time coke user. But let's forget all that. It's naked picture time! Yay! Yay! Herb scores three naked pictures of Lisa. And one, fully clothed, Alexa creeping up behind her with a bat. What? What? There must be some explanation for this. Nope. Uh, Fortunately, (laughs) Alexa calls right then to just say she's being framed for Lisa's murder. How did you know? Herb should hightail it over there with his evidence. And along the way, Steven, Alexa's boyfriend, shows up to kick Herb's ass and steal the picture. Go, Steven. Like you do. No, wait, he's a bad guy. Sorry. Never <clears> does <throat> Herb suspect why everyone knows all these things. No, because yep. Herb's an idiot. Yep. <laughs> just knows it. Yep. Um, so we have a, a couple plot points that we want to cover today because there's, oh man, the second half of this book is just a treat. Uh, yeah. It yeah. is yeah, I Christopher have Pike is like, things. oh wait, I spent so much time <laughs> discussing film developing. how to develop film. I need to tie up this plot real quick, real quick, and he does it real quick. <laughs> Make this climax three pages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whoops. So uh, Herb there is headed off to Alexa's to tell this story, and we also learn in a one sentence the history of abuse by her father, Tossin. <coughs> you know. 
While Alexa's throwing shade at Sammy and making her believe the picture was taken at a different time by Sammy. <gasps> and then the frame. Yeah. And then to solidify this, she just makes out with him a little bit. And he's like, well, that doesn't sound like Sammy. Oh, we're making out. Yeah, totally. I, yeah. yeah I literally set up the camera is. and went and collected the film myself. Yeah, no, this lines up. This tracks. Yeah. Sure. Someone else. We're did kissing this. now. Lines up. Yep. And not even really like making out. I, sh- I should clarify that. It was really yeah. just like a kiss, right? Yeah. yeah. There wasn't, there was no second base. There was like no over the shirt action. There is the most romantic thing of all, which is him comparing her to an eagle, the what? sexiest bird. What? <laughs> yes. And he does also say that um, she was really sexy when she was chewing with her mouth full. So like, yes. that's cool. Mm. And yep. that yep. she's the prettiest girl in school now that Lisa's dead. <gasps> Herb. Herb. It's a mess. Good work for Hallmark. A, Ge- a gentleman for all seasons. <laughs> I'm sure that girl had to be doing cocaine based on what she ate at McDonald's. Right? Right, yeah. yeah. Like Big Mac, large fry, strawberry shake. I'm like, <laughs> yes. damn, girl. Alexa's is living normal? her best life. <laughs> and she comes over to Herb's house and she's like, make me a sandwich. Yeah. Give me some beers. Which, props, yes, girl. And drink beer. Props, girl. She's like, make me a sandwich. Give me some beers. And he's like, okay. And okay. he describes it as like the biggest sandwich ever in the history of the world. Like, Which is great. When yeah. I was growing up, we used to call it a big, disgusting sandwich. Like, <laughs> I'd come home from school and make a big, disgusting sandwich with like anything that was in the fridge. Yes. And like, but that's a high schooler thing too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, she's a cheerleader, so she's jumping around and yeah. doing flips and shit. Yep. Baking. Yeah. Is there is there a fetish for, like, watching people eat? Is that yes. a thing? Yes, that is. It is. It's oh. called Feeders and Eaters. <laughs> what? Oh. Did you know is that off the top of your head? Our next podcast. I watched a lot of Bones. <laughs> oh. I'm probably bl- blushing right now. I think um, there's an episode of CSI okay. about it, too. Yeah. I also think people do that and don't realize it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You oh, know, yeah. Really like, oh, yeah. I'm just taking care of her. She's 700 pounds. Who someone's bringing yeah. her the food. Mm. Well, and Herb is turned on by literally everything as yeah. well. So I guess yeah. we shouldn't be surprised that he finds her eating I sexy. feel like that's normal for teenage boys. I was never a teenage boy, but I've heard that's kind of a thing for all. I... I just think it's funny that he described, like, specifically said she was sexy mm-hmm. when she was chew- when she chewed with her mouth full. Because mm-hmm. like, he imagined his penis. <laughs> <laughs> her chewing on his penis. Her mouth full of his penis. <laughs> there we you go. Know what? He's, there we go. <laughs> Herb's Herb's taking anything. He Listen, can get. Right, that's an yeah. hors d'oeuvre Herb's- at best. <laughs> one of those little baby sandwiches Ooh. yeah <laughs> he also talks about the black spots floating in her pupils at one point at multiple Which, like, points but at one point black, black, black it would have to be her irises yeah. yeah he specifically says like floating around her pupils so maybe it's like around Basic in biology, a circle like. in any case like People shouldn't have black spots floating around in their eyes. It's from the cocaine. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. Duh. Yep. As we've learned. <laughs> Is Pike. that what that does? Pike that nice. thing. <laughs> yeah. What was the research that Christopher Pike did for this book? But we know it's not normal cocaine. cocaine. We find out later it's not normal cocaine. Okay, but like, did Christopher Pike just do a bunch of cocaine? But she's not. She's not doing. Because it doesn't sound I feel like, like it. Because some of his. I. Not saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> People you've talked to have told you that that's not how it works. <laughs> right. Well, and so she is doing. She is doing normal you cocaine. Have to sniff pretty hard. You yeah. can't just breathe. <laughs> Christopher Pike had one friend who did coke one time. Yeah, and that was and his source for this. Christopher book. Pike read a newspaper story about a teenager who like did coke on accident. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and no, that was his this research is not for the normal book. Normal cocaine. No. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Which we but, get to. So they yeah. like they make out for 0.5 seconds right. and then mm-hmm. Herb is like, "Yeah, let me go. We should go give you the the print and the negative of this picture and Sammy's totally framing you and my best friend is a killer and this is all fine and normal." Yeah. And so then so they go back to Herb's house, right? And mm-hmm. because Alexa wants to see his room, which is messy and dirty like always. And so like Herb. vinegar because he develops film in yeah. there. He oh, rats himself out a lot. He tells on himself like a lot. Yeah. Um and during all this, Sammy's like calling him and they're back and forth and all this stuff and she insists on seeing the picture. And after some shenanigans, they insist, they, you know, they agree to meet at the deadly curve. 
Yes. Because that's a good idea. No mm-hmm. one says like, hmm, this doesn't seem right. Right. No, not at all. Not like, hey, Sammy, come over to my house where it's normal, where it's expected that you would just be here. Yeah. Um. So they're at the deadly curve. Herb and Alexa, Sammy's there. Steven also shows up. And he accuses Sammy of stealing Lisa's package. Wait, what? Was Lisa what also package? dealing drugs? No. What? Sammy shoots Steven. Theo, out of nowhere, shows up and shoots Sammy. He's like on a rock somewhere, like far away. Yes. Like yes. sniping. Like, for for a long time as the sniper. <laughs> yes. Because we don't know who it is. Yes. And this whole time, like Herb and Alexa's like, no, we have to hide and like wait and see what happens. And Herb's mm-hmm. like, but we're meeting Sammy here and she's right there. And she's like, no, no, we have to hide. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Just in case it's a plot to kill them. Right. Yeah, what if she has an accomplice hiding somewhere? It, it's also, old. we need to make sure we have a gun with us. Don't yes. mind my dad over there. Yes. Oh, God. We'll come back to dad. Right. We'll, we're circ- we'll circle back oh, to dad. dad. Yep. Just like one sentence in there. Come on, yes, Alexa. Ugh. It was like the most interesting part. Yeah. So everyone has a gun. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sammy shoots Steven. Theo shoots Sammy. Sammy. And he shoots Sammy because she, he says that she killed Roger. And yes. she has guilt. Oh, we didn't get to that part yeah, yet. Right. Yes. And yeah, then she falls off the cliff. She gets shot and then falls yeah, off the she cliff. Gets, yeah. She falls off the cliff onto the wreckage <laughs> yes, from the I car accident. <gasps> she Damn. lands on the twisted shards of metal from the car accident. Of course. That they just leave there. There has been no crime scene team to pack that up. <laughs> Well, they just said, well, eh, eh. So after all this happens, we're back at home and we have now flash, we've come into the present. So Mm -hmm. all of this has been happening through flashbacks. Herb's telling this to a detective, Fitzsimmons, over the phone with, you know, being interrogated by a detective without parental supervision. That's great. He's 18. Uh, Oh, a lawyer though. That's true. But he's a dummy. So he does mention, like, do I need a lawyer at one point? And the cop's like, no, no, you don't need a lawyer. Yeah. But do I need a lawyer? Just tell me all the things. It'll be fine. Is what I did illegal? No. Not any more illegal than what I'm telling you right now. Right. (laughs) This tape will be completely inadmissible in court. Right. Oh my gosh. So much. Um, I'm real mad at Detective Fitzsimmons. Right? Yeah. Like, come on. So no one figured this out ahead of time. Yeah. So uh, a lot of shenanigans there. And Fitzsimmons finally says, you know what, buddy? Because you're not going to come in. And there's this whole thing about how Herb's like just too lazy to go to the police station. But he's like pretending. But then he just doesn't want to get out of bed. Yeah, they're uh, having this all over the I phone. Don't know while if like he's afraid to go in and like get arrested, but he think he wants to tell the truth, so he'll say it on the phone. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Herb's a complicated person. <laughs> like his motivation at any given point in time is pretty hard to nail down because it seems to change from sentence to sentence. Yeah, pretty much so. <laughs> well, and he's like, "Don't come over," and Fitzsimmons is like, "But should I come over? I can be there in half an hour." And he's like, "But don't come over." And Fitzsimmons is like, "But should I come over?" And he's I like, think I should come, come over. over. Oh, uh, okay, if you want to. And then Herb sets up his camera device with the timer one last time. Dun, dun, dun. He's got to get his money's worth. I mean, he did steal a $450 VCR. Is he not planning to take that back? He was originally, but now obviously plans to change. He was talking about how he was soldering things. and like. I feel like once you've put taken a soldering gun to something, you can't like put it back. You can't unsolder something. So where in his six month old unwashed jeans did Herb smuggle this VCR? Like how did he get that out of there? In his unwashed flannel, in Clearly, his unkempt hair. Somehow this factory is run by literally two 18 year olds and one of them is just smash well he so said like, the manager was the one who was giving theo beer and the manager was wait, was drunk all the yeah, time yes. the manager would drink a six-pack every night enablers wow. and it was 1991 so they didn't have security cameras everywhere to make mm. sure that your employees aren't stealing your late their labor from you yeah <laughs> um <laughs> anyway we trusted, <laughs> we trusted people a lot more maybe I don't know. 
We might have trusted people a lot more, but no, we didn't. We just we didn't, just didn't have, have the means. No, yeah. We just didn't have the means. We hadn't figured it out yet. How to like? How do you think we got all that technology? Yes. Right. We hadn't that figured out all these surveillance <laughs> yes. techniques yet. Yes. <laughs> oh, all right. I have so much more to say on this, but yes. But before we do that, we are going to have a word from our sponsor, SexyHackers.com. SexyHackers.com Welcome back. We are here on Who Let Me Read This, um, working our way through Die Softly by Christopher Pike. Back after the break. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. This is where it starts to heat up for sure. Things are starting to to get going. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. I I really love, I have to say, probably my biggest WTF moment um, in in this whole section right here is how quickly Herb believes that girls just sneak up on each other in the shower with bats for fun. Yeah. Like, Alexa tells him that, and he's like, yup, sounds right. Fully clothed. So uh, Herb's, you know, talking to Alexa, and he's like, why were you sneaking up on her with a bat? And she's like, oh, we were cheering at the baseball team a game and it was bad because they're really bad and let's talk about that for another like page thanks Pike <laughs> um and then we were helping them carry the bats and the balls and somehow Lisa got in the shower really fast and I just snuck up on her with a bat ah. <laughs> hilarious Here's what- I mean in her defense cheerleading or doing any sort of uh, school spirity things at a baseball game is super boring yeah uh what wondered what me more unbelievable well, to me, was that a girl was taking a shower alone at school. Like, why wouldn't you just go home? Yeah. yeah. Like, unless you're yeah. forced to take a shower at school, you're, you're not taking a shower in the open shower. It's just, yeah. That's, yeah. Not. Which, mm-hmm. like, so much of this plot hinges on, like, these completely unbelievable feats of, like, timing and coincidence of, like, so Lisa then is the only person who stayed to take a shower. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Alexa's able to sneak up on her with a bat in the shower. <laughs> like people constantly and like meet each other in someone places. Someone knew it was like, going to Sammy knew it was going to happen ahead of time. But she and did knew exactly it when it was going to happen. But yeah. She and like did. everything worked out perfectly. The timing it is what gets did me. happen. Yeah. Like that moment. Yeah. At that moment. I feel I like there yeah. was a there must have been a lot of like very awkward conversations with like tertiary characters in this universe where like Sammy's standing outside the door like no you need to get in the shower right now no it's it's uh-huh. 357 you have to go stuff that he could have put in the book besides how to develop yeah. film <laughs> it's really important that you get in the shower right now right and then now. like go, somebody go. else tries to come into the shower and she's like no 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 shower's broken <laughs> like yeah. right. there was a lot of like awkward zhuzhing happening behind if the we scenes make this into a movie we got but... some splaining to do <laughs> I don't feel like it would be that hard to keep teenage girls out of the shower because no teenage girl wants to take a shower except for Lisa. I mean, mm-hmm. in public, like we take showers. <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can count on one hand the number of like gym class showers I took oh, in high none. school. No. On one hand. And that was like because we were forced swimming. to. Yeah. yeah. No, we didn't do swimming. Mm. Oh. We did. Yeah, at, we didn't have a pool. Yeah, our middle school. We were actually required to do showers, but we had like <laughs> shower curtain stalls mm. Um, mm. because I remember this so bizarrely. My sister was on the school council, like the student council, and they had to argue to have shower curtains put in because everyone thought that Mrs. Mueller was a total perv. I'm sorry. I always thought you were nice. You never creeped me out. It was just the word around there's school. There's one at every school I where like, like there's school, one. Yeah, yeah there's one, one of the staff teachers, member yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. I took a lot of group showers at Girl Scout camp, like mm. outside. Huh. <laughs> like, okay. we had outdoor, outdoor showers, showers, yeah. And they weren't, well, you could go in curtain ones, but they were filled with spiders and stuff inside. Or you could um. go to the outdoor ones that every, you know. Yeah, yeah. that were not full of spiders. Right. <laughs> yes. And shower under the tree. Yeah. Huh. Can I just say, I, this is probably the least sexy discussion of girl group showers that's ever <laughs> yes. happened on a podcast. <laughs> well, if I you don't want to get spiders in your hair, yeah. right? And you don't want to get perved on by the gym teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Um, I had one. I had a gym teacher who I'm 
99.99999% sure was a lesbian. And she was the least awful of all the gym teachers. She was the coolest gym teacher. So yeah, that like tends to be the case. Teachers. I feel like we all Always think say. the wrong person is the creep. Um, speaking of creeps, how about Alexa's dad? Oh, <laughs> so, so, because I feel like we sentence? need to deep dive into this for a minute. Oh, um, yes. wait, yeah, I, cause I'm it sure I have it bookmarked cause it's literally one sentence. So they're talking about, um, Alexa's throwing a ton of shade on Sammy and like, Hey, I don't have Sammy's it gonna, you know, Sammy's gonna do this and Sammy probably set this up and look at that tiny blurb in the photo. Doesn't that look like a flannel? Doesn't that look like a man? Who else could that be but Sammy? Yep. That I do have marked. Right? It's on page 140. So, you know, <laughs> if you're following along in your copy of the book, it's on page 140. Right? So in the middle of all that, Alexa's, you know, throwing a bunch of shade, trying to make Sammy seem really guilty and, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out all the ways that this is totally logical that she snuck up on her friend with a bat. As you um, do. And in the middle of it, she just tosses in like one sentence about her childhood. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so we got, we uh, I have the, the bit here. Um, so they're leaving Herb's house at this point, and uh, Herb makes a joke about how it, she makes it sound like her mom was abusive towards her. <laughs> and uh. Alexa smiled thinly. No, it's my dad who beat me, she added softly. And other things. <gasps> Herb froze. What other things? The kind of things you read about in women's magazines. The kind of things TV preachers talk about as signs of the coming of the Antichrist. Those kind of other things. I'm sorry, what? And then he goes, you mean sexual abuse? And she goes, yeah. And then they move on. And that's it. And, and the light in her green eyes was cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's uh, like, we also get the casual drop. Yeah, we get the casual drop like a bit after that about how um, like she made her dad pay for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I got she him back. She did something that kept him from ever doing it again. Yep. And then. Yeah. But we don't really, we don't know. We never learn exactly what that is. But we no. do hear about when Herb is over at Alexa's house, we see dad like a crippled old man, older than he his is years. Like, and yeah. he's described as almost, it like. It sounds like he's a paraplegic. Right. Like he can't it's, get He's up. described as being like, seeming seemingly being a paraplegic where he's like, oh, his head was at a weird angle. Yeah, he's like he, bent neck lady from haunting a pill house. It's a whole thing. Up. He's having a hard time breathing. Like, and Herb is just like, huh? We might have sex. How about that? Not the dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Right, but that's it. Like these and, whole oh. two hundred fifty pages, and maybe a page total is dedicated maybe. to this. Maybe, and maybe she. Dad looks at them while they're at her house getting the gun, and she says, don't look at us, and he closes his eye and turns around. <laughs> and that's it. Like, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's maybe a page. And mm -hmm. compared to the amount of time we spend talking about what brand of film he uses, like, right? And how many yeah, of her <laughs> yeah. gallons of cocaine that were laying around. Like, really? Compared to how much time we spend driving around drunkenly with Theo yes. shooting at things. Find There's your infinite gun beer in this, like, infinite town beer, for children. Gun. To be yes. fair, the book's okay, not no. about her. It's about it's her. This is true. That's true. It's true, but it, you know, this helps explain some of her, her issues, and I don't I Yeah, don't it know. is, it's the go-to, like, dude writer like, I need this girl to have a reason to have, like, a troubled past. The only past. thing that can make you yeah. strong is sexual abuse, you know. Yes! yes. Mm -hmm. Rain, one of those things. It's the, it's the, this, they sands the it Game her. of Thrones effect. <laughs> yes. yes. They sands it her real you hard. Can only, you can only be a, a strong, decisive woman character if you are either constantly under threat of sexual assault or yes. are sexual sexually assaulted. Yes. Yep. Which is a great message given what we learn about her later. Like there's so many troubling implications of like his understanding of trauma and like just it's yucky. Yeah. Guys. Um, it's yuck bad. Herb. And speaking of, of of Pike himself, um, so he's he is a little bit troubling himself from what we know. Ooh. Yeah. He's mm. he's kind of a recluse. 
which okay. I know almost made it more interesting. Um, so his name is actually Kevin McFadden. Um, Ooh, that's a good name. Yeah. Um, good name. Why didn't he use that one? So he said that he it came up very spontaneously. He was being asked um, when he one of his first books was being published, Slumber Party. He was asked for a book, and he was like, uh, 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 Christopher Pike, because he heard it on Star Trek, and he didn't think that the show would be around for very long. Oh, even no. though he thought it was you really, really good. Sweet summer child. <laughs> I was like, what? So if you thought it was really good, then why didn't you? All right, whatever, fine. Okay, Herb. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I liked having a short last name that was easy to remember for future fans. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Um, yeah, he was, he was born in New York, um, but he grew up in California, um, attended college very briefly, work, worked a lot of like odd jobs, kind of bouncing around. And he was trying his hand at science fiction writing and adult mystery and failed terribly oh sweet baby angel mm. i yeah. wonder why sorry babe so it was suggested that he work on young adult books instead um because mm -hmm. the bar is so much lower right um his first attempt resulted in the 1985 novel slumber party a book about a group of teenagers who run into bizarre and violent events during a ski weekend which is basically the plot for all 50 ish of his books uh, mixed in with some awkward awkward sex and a bunch of cocaine Cocaine is like a running theme in, <laughs> in his books. Um, Which is interesting considering how little he seems to know about cocaine. Yeah, it's up there a lot. Um, he wrote a very popular series called Spooksville. And his book, Fall into Darkness, was adapted into a television movie. Ooh, yeah, because you watch it, please. I need to. I need to see it. Um, so he's, he's very private. He rarely gives interviews. He's just recently started posting on like his Facebook page to answer just book-specific questions. He does not talk okay. about his regular life. Um, but he's also... So That's he, actually me. Yeah. I'm yeah. Christopher so Pike, you guys. <laughs> I'm not. Don't sue me, Christopher Pike. Like, <laughs> the one thing he's talked about is that he's really creeped out by blood. And you can tell Herbs actually says that in the book. Don't tell me about the blood. He yes. That. Yeah, that's very Pike. So I'm thinking Herb is a little bit Pike mm -hmm. or a lot. Oh, Kevin man. McFadden. Yeah. This is yeah. a theme that we're, we're striking like. into here. Because yeah. we had V.C. Andrews who yes. wrote about all of these isolated characters. And then we have poor Christopher Pike and poor fucking Herb. Right? Like, his bad I mean, memory and his bad socializ socialization and his bad everything. Right? Because you, you write what you know and mm -hmm. you know yourself. So um, what I think is really interesting, though, is he also includes, like, in his writing, he talks, um, a lot of his characters are named Anne. Um, you see that in a lot of the books. Anne is his sister. Um, hmm. But she also gets killed. She's sometimes the bad guy. Like, she just sort of tosses that around. And this book, Die Softly, was dedicated to his brother. Uh all right. Did his brother ha die in a cocaine fueled car crash? <laughs> I I can't. Like tell. maybe his brother. Maybe there was some traumatic cocaine issue with his brother, and that is why he like hyper focuses on cocaine so much in his books. Could be. I mean, and it's the eighties, and he doesn't. Uh, he's never. God, no, I said that that's not the case, so <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like we can assume that that's the case. Give us a call, Christopher Pike. We'll have you on Probably the podcast. Won't. Yeah, doesn't like to talk to people. So. <laughs> you don't have um, to talk to us. We'll just talk over you. It's fine. <laughs> it's our time now, it's Christopher our Pike. Time time now, Christopher this. Pike. <laughs> so interesting, interesting dude. Um, so. As we, we left off the plot, um, Herb is talking to Detective Fitzsimmons. They're recapping mm -hmm. everything. Fitzsimmons says he's coming over or not. Maybe. Yeah, or maybe. He's like, I could come over if you want. Oh, I think okay. I should come over. No, don't. I should come over. Don't come over. But I could. could. But really, he wants him to. Yeah. 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 I, nobody's. No. Everyone is not saying <laughs> what they want. Or what they need to say. Yeah. I feel like we just need to have some communication here. Somebody and needed to mediate. Which is <laughs> fine. Um, we're going to come back next week with a whole lot more of a wrapping up loose ends. Because oh Christopher gosh. Pike left it all until the last second here. All of it. Um, but if you are watching on YouTube, if you've been watching this episode on YouTube, like, subscribe. There's a Thing bell somewhere. somewhere. A bling. 
somewhere. So bubbling on. If you are listening on your podcast app of choice, go ahead and give us a five star rating. Yeah. You don't it helps have- with the algorithm. Yes. Ooh, you don't even have to write anything. Internet magic. Just, you don't, yeah, you don't even need to write anything. Just boop, boop, five stars. But you can. Just like you do for your Lyft driver. It's fine. Yeah. I love to hear from you guys. Yes, we also love to hear from you. I love um, comments. If you are on the iTunes app, that is the purple play button. Boop. Yes, do that. Boop. Especially yeah, if you're good. Christopher Pike. If you're Christopher <gasps> Pike, give us a call. <laughs> awesome. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Bye. SexyHackers.com Stream Team.